Sarah, did you know there's a castle in Kentucky and they're turning it into a distillery? True story? True story. Castle isn't really going to be a distillery. Well, but Chad, that's misleading. There will be a distillery just four miles down the road, but they own the castle. The castle is something that we grew up with, you know, being yeah. from Lexington. It's on Versailles Road. So if you're going out that way or towards like Keeneland or Versailles, you drive by the castle pretty much to get on Bluegrass Parkway to go to a lot of distilleries. And when I was yeah. a little kid, we used to drive by it on the way to my grandparents' house. And I used to tell my mom, one day I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna live there. How'd that work out for you? Well, I don't live there, but I have went to a great party there. <laughs> you were, yeah, you just visited there. Yeah, same thing. When I was a kid, also driving to my grandmother's, um, we would pass that before we got on Bluegrass Parkway. You know, I would be like, is it coming up yet? They'll let me know, I didn't want to miss it. And it was very much sort of shrouded in mystery. It was shrouded while. in mystery, yeah. We got some info <clears throat> when we went to the Kentucky Castle uh, just the other day, so we'll share a little bit of that with you. And then um, I'm gonna talk about True Story, which who now owns the castle, mm -hmm. and we'll be having a distillery about four miles from the castle in Versailles, where they'll be making everything. So, real quickly, the castle itself, built in 1969. Yes, it was built as a residence by the Martins. Apparently they had been over in England, a trip together, seen a lot of castles, been like, mm -hmm. I want a piece of this, you know, back home. I'm assuming money was no object, because they were like, let's build a castle in Versailles. Uh, so they started on it in 1969, and worked on it. It was unfinished um, when they separated in 1975. Mm -hmm. So then the plan was to sell it and it was listed, but for th almost 30 years, it just remained listed and all offers were rejected. Speculate what you will on that. Um, right. The husband just never sold it and he passed away in 2003 having never sold it. So in 2003, it was purchased by a man named Tom who wanted to turn it into a B&B &B before he could open it in 2004. <laughs> Sadly, it caught fire and destroyed the majority of the work that had been done on it. So it was known as the Castle Post for a while. Yep, so the B&B &B actually opened in 2007, and fun fact, because of the fire, the only remaining original pieces of the castle are a couple of the towers and then the main exterior wall. Everything else is new. It operated as its own bed and breakfast until 2017, and then a group of five owner investors came in, bought it, and then added the restaurant, did tours, added the spa. So instead of it just being more of like a private, you know, you can only see it if you book, it became still a B&B, &B, but then also had reasons to let the public in. Cause like us, you know, a lot of people from around here who drive by it are like, what is that? What's in there? So they wanted to satisfy people's curiosity so they opened the restaurant and- yep. Yeah, and it is a hotel. I think it's an 18 room hotel. And then mm. they have a couple of buildings on site there that you can kind of rent the whole building out like a cabin mm -hmm. and, some of the towers uh, are have rooms the towers are suites i believe suites, yeah. yeah yeah so anyway so there's that's a pool there's pool. a spa yeah there's gardens Garden. <laughs> there's goats, goats. Th and they have like their own farm program out there which i thought was really cool and, like high school students come participate and help tend to the garden and stuff so we got to do you know, they had these little bouquet things and you got to pick your own flowers and take them home with you that was nice yeah, but that's the that's the Kentucky Castle. So the Henderson family, which is the family that started Angel's Envy and then later sold Angel's Envy, they're the ones behind this. And there's a lot of Hendersons. There's a lot of Hendersons. <laughs> yeah. So Wes Henderson and all of the Henderson sons were there, and they were talking about their new brand, which is called True Story. They have this thing called pull up a chair, and it's kind of like you know what you do when you're drinking bourbon. You're like, well, pull up a chair. I'll tell you a story. And a lot of times you start off with. So, okay, true story. And then, you, you know, you spin your yarn while you're drinking your whiskey. Mm -hmm. So they took that and that's their brandy now for the uh, bourbon and rye, which we will be tasting in this episode. So the bourbon is a five and six year old Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey that is then finished in a white Muscatel barrels, um, which is a wine, for about six months. And then the rye is a blend of a 95.5 and a 91.9 rye that are then separated into different little sections and each one's finished in. We've got Amberana, Oloroso Sherry, PX Sherry, mm -hmm. and blended back together mm -hmm. to create the rye. 
Now, I'm That's right. not really an Amberana person, so right, I was yeah. a little hesitant, and I don't well, think I've ever had a Muscatel finish before. Right, yeah, 90 proof for the bourbon, 100 proof for the rye, and we're not sure about the resting periods for the three barrels of the rye, mm -hmm. but at least one of them is up to 12 months. Mm -hmm. I would hope, because you were mentioning, mentioning the Amberana, that but the Amberana is not 12 months. No. And I don't think it is, because otherwise it would just be... It would take over. Yeah, it would, be, it would uh, totally take over. Yeah. We're going to start with the bourbon, because it is 90 proof, and usually you want to do bourbon before rye anyway. So, pause for cork pop. Nice. And you definitely get that, like, light berry floral sweetness that I would expect with white, kind of desserty wine on the nose of this. A little bit of like honeysuckle, or I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I'm getting it. a lot of berries. Berries, mm. citrus, floral. Maybe light. a little bit of honey. Mm -hmm. I like this nose, I like it a lot. Oh, we should also say the suggested retail price when these do come out, which, what was the release uh, date? I believe the initial release is Kentucky and Tennessee mm -hmm. on October 10th. There um, also on the True Story website, if you're curious. That's true, true story. Um, <laughs> 59.99, 69.99. Correct. Yeah. Wow, that tastes like a five to six year old Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished for six months in a white Muscatel barrel. True story, Sarah. Uh, it's because it is. Wow, you're really wearing that out, aren't you? Oh, they need to get used to it because. No, I'm not going to get used to it. I refuse. People will. Uh huh. They wear sure it will. Out. Yeah. You know, we were invited to their like media day. We got to spend the entire day at the castle doing various activities, tastings, cocktails. We picked our own flowers, I petted a goat, <laughs> got a 15 minute massage, it was great. Yeah. Um, really spoiled, I don't know what I did to deserve that. All right. They must have heard it was my birthday coming up. Yeah. But one of my favorite part was, of course, when our dear friend Peggy No Stevens did the pairing with dinner, mm. and she paired this bourbon with a salad. And I, Say what? at first I was like, when I think of whiskey, I don't think of lettuce. I was cautious, but it's Peggy, so I trust her. Mm -hmm. And man, it really surprised it was me. Like one of the best pairs. It had like a rich kind of I don't know some sort of sauce on it with a vinaigrette and some Brazil nuts and like these really really thin crispy fried onions. And the between the vinaigrette and the sauce and the onions and the nuts with the whiskey and that white wine. Yeah, it was my favorite thing of the night and maybe one of my favorite pairings of all time. Like. Was, I mean, round really, of applause for Peggy. Really she does know how to do it. That was really good. So we've let this kind of sit on the palate, so let's go in for our second sip here. Yeah, as you said, I don't think I've ever had a, a, a mus muscatel. Mus muscatel finished bourbon before, and it is pretty unique. I, I I'll say this. I don't know if it's if they just picked really good five- and six-year-old barrels or not, having not tried the bourbon before it was finished, but nothing about this points to it being, like, between five and six years old. I think... It has more of a maturity to it mm, in, in mm -hmm. its taste. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe that's an extra six months it's spent finishing yeah. um, in the white wine barrel. Um, I do get, you know, a little more pop of heat towards the finish, which I think, you know, leaning towards that five and six year old, that's my only indicator is like that. With it being 90 proof. <sighs> with it being 90 proof when you get that. Right. <sighs> but actually, that's I don't mind it at all because I think that white wine finish quells that a lot. Uh -huh. um, and so it's making it enjoyable. Right, yeah. If I were just guessing blind, I'd probably put this at 100 proof. Just, yeah, the way, as you said, it's sort of, you know, on the palate and coming to the chest. But it's nice. It's giving you a nice, you know, little, uh, we can say Kentucky hug. We can say Kentucky hug. Uh, Kentucky hug with a European accent. But I can see, like, as I'm sipping this by itself without the salad, how she got there. And I just think that's genius. Yeah. There is a surprising amount of oak. Surprising only because of the five and six year. I think it is because of the secondary barrel. And also that sort of that honey note that I was getting on the nose. I'm also getting that mm. on the palate. A little bit of those berries. I mean, it's, it's pretty good mouthfeel, really, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for it. Both of these bottles, I mean, we'll get mm. into the rye in a second, make a lot of sense coming from the Henderson family. Just when you think about where Angel's Envy came from, you know, being the pioneer in finished American bourbon, really, as far as like right. on the shelf available options. And they said that they want to they wanted to continue the ownership of sort of the the finished category um, with them being really the ones who started it mm -hmm. started it all yeah because from an outsider's perspective you might be like your first two products are finished a finished bourbon and a finished rye but yeah you then you think oh it's the hendersons it's uh, the family behind angel's envy yeah it, may, it makes sense shall we move on to the rye 
We shall, but before we do, I wanna tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the t-shirt and hat that I'm wearing, the Glen Cairns that we're drinking from, our water glasses. A uh, new batch of bottle cut candles will be coming up here shortly for the holidays. And it's probably the last episode we'll be, we'll be able to remind you, that is, of our September Bourbon Heritage Sale where you get 10% off site-wide, plus free shipping on orders $100 and above. All that and more at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night join our community for as little as one buck a month. And there, depending on your tier, you get all the time discounts on that merch. So you don't have to wait for our September uh, Bourbon Heritage Month sale. And you also get access to our barrel picks after the episode exclusives and more. Yeah, in fact, all these names here are some of our awesome patrons. Look at them. Mm. Don't you just love them? I do. All right, well, we're gonna get a uh, fresh glass, take a little break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back and pause for Cork Pop. All right, so we've got the rye in our glass. We already gave you the breakdown about it. I think that the design of these, I love the design, like the minimalist, just like bold font, super straight to the point. Obviously I'm a black, like I love <laughs> black and white. I love a good neutral. Um, yeah. So I love the color scheme, just like keeping it simple and straightforward. I am curious as they go to market, how the public will respond to these solid bottles because there is not being able to see the liquid quite a bit of mistrust in the industry i feel like with the actual transparency both of the glass and then also being transparent about where things come from sourced wise and everything we do see some pushback to bottles that are not clear so it'll be interesting to see how the public responds to that. I think people's thoughts are like, people are trying to sell something that's really young and really light, and they're trying to get away with it by putting it in a solid bottle. But as soon as you pour this, I mean, you can see the color in it. So it's yeah. obviously like they're not hiding. The colors are great. The rye is a little bit darker touch, than the bourbon. Yeah. It's also 100 proof, so it's got uh, that, plus it's got three barrels instead of the one. Um, they're not the only ones to do completely you know, painted bottles. There What's are the one few, with like the lip? Uh, burning tattoo, chair, I think. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, burning chair. Uh, there's some others out there who New Riff is like partially. Yeah, New Riff at least you can see at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we'll see how that works I'm out I'm interested for. to see what happens. Now again, just to remind you, PX Sherry, Oloroso Sherry, and Brazilian Amberana Oak. Immediately I'm like, cinnamon toast crunch, cinnamon yep. rolls, yep. Uh, mm -hmm. cinnamon boozy French toast. Yes. You cinnamon something, big red gum. Definitely get some desserty notes on it, some like rich yeah. syrup. Um, you definitely won't mistake this for not being Amberana in the mixture. All right, folks, to your health. A lot of dry baking spice, a little bit of apple. Cinnamon. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> baking spice, yeah. Yeah, cinnamon, um, yeah, baked, I kind of get baked, baked apples. apples. Yeah, a sugary baked Desserty, apple. Desserty, syrupy, mm. dark, rich. A little bit caramel. I'm not an Amberana girl. Admittedly, it's not for me. It's, a, it's too overpowering in my opinion. However, this is one of the ones that I'm like, I can actually drink it. I mean, and I did have some at the event, but then I'm sitting here drinking it and I'm not like, ugh. Um, right, uh, I'm the I same way. I'm not an Amberana girl. You're not an Amberana girl <laughs> No, it, living in an Amberana world. Uh, I think it's like the percentage of the Amberana, of like the barrels that are finished in Amberata that then also the amount of time they're finished and then the fact that they're, you know, married with the PX and the Oloroso Sherry, which I think probably keeps that Amberana under control. Well, that's and, working for me. And also in that 12 month period, again, we don't know where the Amberana is sitting in the length of time of that barrel. I really don't think it's the, the full 12 months. But for me, Amberana is sort of like a safe cracker. It takes a, a light touch. Yeah. You know, just I a guess. real light touch of a safe cracker. For um, some reason, I thought you were talking about like a cracker that oh, was not safe. dangerous. <laughs> um, so, no sharp edges on this cracker. Yeah, like, just, it's round. It's round. Safe cracker. A safe like cracker touch. Yeah, like a very gentle. It's the Italian job. Hand. There you go. Yeah. This is one of the best Amberana finished whiskeys that I've had. There's there's one other that I can think of that's up there that kind of hangs mm -hmm, with it. Mm -hmm. So again, like I said, it's really not my thing neat, but it, we had this kind of lull in between our activities right before we went to like cocktail hour and dinner. And it was a long day, it was a great day, but it was a lot of activities. I was starting to feel tired. So I was like, I kind of need a little pick me up. Yep. Love an espresso martini with whiskey in it. But instead of just being like, going to the bar and being like, hey, can you just give me any old espresso martini? I was like, I feel like the rye would be really good because of those 
earthy baking spice notes and the desserty flavors that are in it. I think that would hold up well to the coffee. And I'll tell you what, I think that was my favorite drink I had yesterday. We got bottles. I will use mine exclusively, I think, for espresso martinis. That little bit of like cinnamon coming through. Mm -hmm. It was so good, like a fall espresso martini. I'm in love. <laughs> yeah, and then also, our second favorite pairing that Peggy did, uh, for me anyway, I don't wanna speak for you, Sarah, but we had a uh, apple stack cake and it was sort of pick your either your bourbon or the rye and she wanted to know which one you thought paired better and it was unmistakably the rye with that apple, apple stack. stack cake. And that makes sense, we're sort of getting some cooked apples in mm -hmm. here, so it's kind of complimentary. But the um, sweetness and the spice together. Yeah. So I kind of feel like, yeah, w with this, I won't be pouring this neat so much. It'll be more for uh, cocktail use or pairing, which, mm, pairing, yeah. you know, we've we've had bottles before that we actually didn't like. This one we actually do like neat, but we found a great pairing for it. And we're like, well, now we want to keep a bottle this around just for this pairing. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can see this, you know, staying on the bar cart for that reason. We had these, let's put them back in their original yeah. configuration. So uh, $59.99, $69.99. And speaking of those prices, you know, we come back to this a lot. How do we think it's fair? What do we think that falls in line with the market? We've got one finishing component on the bourbon for $59.99 and three finishing components on the rye, which is already higher proof and a more expensive grain at only $10 more. Mm -hmm. They're in that medium to high tier price range, not super premium, but like, you know, I wouldn't call them affordable. I would just call them pretty standard. Sure. Do you, how do you feel? Yeah, I feel like the prices make sense. Actually, you know, because we didn't find out the prices <laughs> until today. So I had kind of built up in my head that these were going to be more around the $100 mark, uh -huh. at, at least one of them. Right. Probably the rye, since it's more finishing and it's a higher proof. Right. So to hear that it was 60 and 70, I was like, oh, I actually was kind of pleasantly surprised. Right. But. If we're just going down to taste, recommend or not, which is really what the people want, bourbon, recommend. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, to have the Muscatel finished bourbon. Um, I like it. And it'd be as good as it is. Yeah, it's unique too. Yeah, recommend. Yeah. The rye is more of a caveat. Like, yes. If you, if you want to use it for cocktails, <laughs> if well, you like Amberana, uh, that's it. If you are just not a fan and you've tried Amberana finish from several different distilleries Every and you're just way. like, not for me. Don't get this because you're not, not going to like it. Your you're not yeah. going to like it. If you're Amberana curious, <laughs> then I would suggest trying this. And if you love Amberana, I would suggest trying this. Then absolutely. So it's uh, Amberana is it's. I don't think there's a whole lot of people in the middle. It's, it's divisive. Either, you love it. You love it, or you just really don't love yeah, it at all. Right. I thought I was in the hate it category, but I have had a few recently, like you said. Just recently. There yeah. have been a couple recently that I have brought me around. Mm -hmm. Um. And that's a little exciting for me. I don't see myself ever being a super fan, right. but I, I have, you know, come a little closer to center. Far <laughs> I, and on the box and whisker chart, I'm no longer okay. the forest whisker. Good. Um, <laughs> Good. Well, there you go. Um, hey, that's where we better leave it. If you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. We hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. All right. Thanks, everybody. Until next time, drink more bourbon or rye. Mm -hmm.